bronze problem cow tipping, Farmer John finds that there are a couple bored teenagers that flipped over some of his cows. Farmer John's cows are in an n-squared arrangement, where they're in an n by n square grid, and some of these cows have been tipped over. So the cow on tipper 3000 is going to be able to flip over a large group of cows at once. And so what we want to do is we want to find how many times we have to use this machine, assuming that every time we use it, an upper left rectangle in this grid of cows is going to be flipped. So the cows that are currently flipped are going to be unflipped, and the unflipped cows are going to be flipped. So we want to give the minimum number of times he has to use his machine. Let's go look at the algorithm for this question. When we solve questions, the easiest way we can try and figure out how to do something is by looking at the restrictions. And in this case, the main restriction we can notice is that when we use the flipper machine, we're going to need to start at the top left corner. And what that means is for any point, if we look at it, if we try a couple examples, we're going to notice that there are always going to be more rectangles for points that are closer to the left side than on the right side. And that's just because if I want to flip this point here, there are a lot of different rectangles that I can use to flip it. I can use this one, this one, this one, and then the same thing for the rows. We have this one, this one, this one, and then keep going down. But for another point, for example, this one here, there are less rectangles that are going to be able to flip it because we don't have more on the right side. And what that basically means is the only rectangles that cover this specific point are going to be these three. So if we play around with a couple examples, we'll notice that the rectangle points that are closer to the left side, simply just because they're closer to this point, they are going to be more rectangles that cover that point and can flip it than the points on the right side. Using this kind of logic, we can realize that we can actually use this restriction to find out where we should start. And the point we should start at is the point actually furthest away from this top left. And that's going to be this bottom right corner. And the reason is because for this specific corner point, there is only one rectangle that is able to flip. So if this is a one, the only rectangle that flips this point here is going to be this rectangle. There is no other rectangle that is able to flip it. So in order to get this to the number that we want, we're going to have to first check it before anything else, and then flip it. And once we've flipped this specific point, we'll notice that the next point that we need to look for is going to be here. And this is again because there are very few rectangles that are going to cover it. And then for this one, we're going to flip it and make sure it's the number we want. So now, once we flipped this point to the point that we want, and then we've used another rectangle to flip this point to the point we want, then we're going to have to look at the next point, which is this point, and then this point, and then this point, and so on and so forth going up. So the way we're going to do this is basically anchoring a point here, and we're just going to say, okay, since there's only one rectangle that can cover this point, then I have to start and make this the number I want. And then once this number is whatever I want, no other rectangle I'm going to flip is going to include this again, which means we can just look at the next point. And then at this next point here, we're going to again flip it to whatever we want. So now we've anchored two points. And then once we have that, then we're not going to use any rectangles that's going to include this point again. Then the same thing for this one, anchoring three points, four points, and then once we finish with this row, we can basically do the same thing with this one, where since all of these are going to be covered, so once we've done the flips and we've gone in this order, we know that this row is no longer something that we need. Then we're just going to start here and do the exact same thing, where we anchor this point, and then maybe we use this rectangle, and then this point where we use this rectangle. And the reason this works well is because when I want to flip this point, since I know that all of the ones to the right and below it have been anchored and we don't want to move them again, then we already know which rectangle we're going to need to flip. And that's going to be the rectangle where this is the bottom rightmost point because all of the points that are to the right or near the bottom, we don't want to flip anymore. 
So for every point, we're just going to check whether or not it needs to be flipped, starting from here and then moving our way up like this. And then if it needs to be flipped, we're just going to flip the rectangle where the top is the top left and then the bottom is that point. And then we're going to update all of the other values. Then we're going to move on to the next one. And if it needs to be flipped, we'll flip it again. And if this one needs to be flipped, it will flip it again and again and so on and so forth. After opening the file and setting up our program, we're going to read in the input. So the input consists of n and then the various grids. So we're going to read in n, and then we're going to create a vector of characters that's basically going to store whether or not the current thing is flipped. And so we're going to store each value as a char, which is going to give us either a 1 or a 0. We could also store this as an integer, but for this specific program, we're going to be using characters. Over here, we're going to loop through n. We're going to create a character called temp, read it in, and then we're going to assign that value to our farm or our grid. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable storing the number of total flips. And this variable is just going to store our answer. After that, we're going to create two for loops that's going to loop through all of the positions from the bottom right corner all the way up to the top left corner. So we have i and j. And then inside, we're going to first check if this position is still a 1. And if the position is a 1, we know we need to create a rectangle and use up another flip in order to get it to a 0. So we're going to add 1 to our total amount of flips, and then we're basically going to flip it. So the program for flipping basically shows where we're going to flip all of the values from 0, 0 to i, j. So this is just flipping the rectangle shown earlier in the algorithm. And then it's the flipping itself is pretty simple. We're going to loop through every position. And for every position, we're going to check if it's currently 0. And in this case, since we're storing it as characters, I'm going to check if it's the character 0. And then we're going to turn it to 1. And if it's not, which basically means the current character is 1, then we're going to flip it back to 0. So this chunk of code here is just going to show the flipping. And at the very end here, we're going to output the total amount of flips. And that's the end of our program. For this program, we're going to be using cat.io to read an input. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to read in the value of n. We're going to create a 2D int that's going to store the value of the farm. And so we're going to read in the input. And then once we've done that, we're going to basically go along with the way we plan this algorithm, meaning we're going to loop through all of the points from the bottom right corner to the top left corner. And for every value, we're then going to check if it's a one. And if it's a one, we know we need to flip it. So we're going to add one to our total flips, and then we're going to flip our rectangle. The rectangle flipping code is relatively simple. We're going to loop through all the values from 0, 0 to i, j, our current index. And then if it's a 0, we'll flip it to 1. And if it's a 1, we're going to flip it to a 0. And once we've finished this, that's pretty much the end of our program. We're just going to print out our total amount of flips, and that's the end.